are again with everyone's favorite marmite boiler some people love it some people hate it can you guess what it is um possibly the most common fault on a combi boiler coming up maybe the second actually i would say but yeah little technical hitch with this video in uh mike had run out of battery sorry it's late i'm tired um mike had run out of battery so there is no sound um yeah kind of awkward means you're stuck with a voiceover from me also means i have to do a really long voiceover now so bear with me little technical hitch and lessons learned check your mic battery first really annoying because this is a set of two there's the other one so but things happen we move we're still here you're still watching appreciate it so let me know what you think at the end here we are another day another worcester quite a common one that you all would have come across before i'm sure green star junior um, it is like i say that marmite boiler some love it some hate it now what this is doing is hot water is fluctuating after it's been running a while starts to dip in hot cold hot cold hot cold and that is as a lot of you will know caused by generally a blocked plate heat exchanger so we're going to get into replacing that now and see how we go. So first, I isolate the valves. I set the cold water flow and return. I know a lot of people don't do that. I know it's dangerous dicing with a flow and return especially. But yeah, old habits die hard. It's just the way I do it. I'm not saying anyone else to do it. Anyways, we'll open this up. Then we've got to take the condensed siphon out. It's pretty easy to do on this got the little black rubber tube on the left hand side there you pull that off then you can pull out from the top there's a little clip got my flexi bucket for draining down i keep forgetting my hose but just remembered halfway through about to drain it i have my wet vac with me so that made life much easier here's a little trick i do again maybe everyone does it maybe no one does it put that on your hot when you've isolated the cold and it will clear that line and just suck out everything so yeah hopefully that's helpful to someone there's your plate at the back there again i was speaking when this video was on but the mic wasn't picking up what you want to do is allow that to free up a little bit by taking them two screws then you want to tilt the right hand side up left hand side down and hopefully you can pull it um Often these are quite hard to get out. I know sometimes you'll have to cut the hot pipe, sometimes you have to take out gas pipes and whatnot. Um, this one looked a real tricky one because it was piped from behind, so that made it look even harder. But I would argue this is probably one of the easiest ones I've actually done. But there you can see my little technique. Tilt it up to the right, and then hopefully you've got enough space just to shimmy that down underneath. But in this case, we have a PRV pipe in the way, which for those of you eagle-eyed people out there can see that that PRV is slightly running uphill, along with the condensed there, but not my install. Let's disconnect this PRV. And that should just drop out. I say should, it did. And there you go. Let's have a look inside it, see how much muck. Sometimes these get really blocked quite badly and still function. Sometimes I've had them barely anything in it and they're causing a massive problem. You change it and then it's fine or you clean it out and it's fine. Give it a little bang. I just, I have got a new one here. I just want to see what's in this one and how bad it is so we give it a little bang run some water through it and we can shake it out and see what deposits are in there how much muck's in there as i say sometimes you get quite a lot of you know big flakes coming out sometimes you just got little little flecks like this which you wouldn't think would cause a problem but they do there's tiny little waterways in here so the way this works for anyone who doesn't know is that it's a plate-to-plate -plate exchanger 
So you've got plates on top of each other and they go hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. And if they get blocked up, the hot ones retain their heat, make the boiler overheat. But where the cold mains is coming through so quickly, it cools it down really quickly. Then you get a fluctuation of water, uh, temperature in the water. I always change the washers, as you can see there. Also, I stick my finger in the back of the manifold there just to make sure there's nothing blocking. A um, bit tricky to get to, but I've got kind of small hands. So, yeah, easy enough for me most of the time. So there we have it, just reassemble in reverse order, two screws. Also, always, always, always change this washer. Actually, scrap that on any Worcester part. If you're disconnecting any of those nuts, just change the washers when you've touched it because they will leak, I guarantee it. So yeah, it comes with all the washers and everything anyway, so no problems there. Put everything else back together. Turn on our valves, pray they don't leak. Also pray that we have no other leaks from anything. Nothing's got caught and we've made sure that we've tightened up all the screws properly and everything. Let's get this up and running again. Put the air spurting out the tap. We should get a nice constant flow. There you go. And now we're hoping for just some consistent hot water without it going hot, cold, hot, cold. And restoring a nice hot shower back for the tenant. And there you have it. Nice, quick, easy replacement. I actually thought that one was going to be a bit of a nightmare just because it was rear piped. And um, as I say, often they are a pain to get out because they're so long. Don't know why Worcester seemed to have the longest plate heat exchangers. Um, yeah, they're huge. And yeah, that can make it a real pain to get out. Sometimes they fly out easy. Sometimes you're, as I say, cutting pipes out, taking gas pipes out. Yeah, just luck of the draw, I guess. Thought this one would be a pain, really wasn't. Maybe that's a trick. Maybe the rear piped ones are easier. Yes, there's nothing generally other than that PRV pipe stopping it coming down. Whereas normally you've got the other pipes to contend with. I don't know. Maybe I'm waffling now. It's late. It's like 1 a.m. when I'm filming this. So, yeah, excuse my voice. A little bit tired but hopefully you enjoyed that might have got something from it if you have great um yeah let me know in the comments types of things you want to see and don't forget to subscribe if you don't really appreciate it and see you next week